Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. I did tell you earlier that our personality today is a woman that we are all so proud of. She's an actress. She's an on-air personality. She's been in media for a very long time. And today we want to learn about her journey. Where did she grow up? What inspires her? And how does she always manage to excel in every single thing she does? I'm talking about Na Ashoko. Mensa Doku. And throughout our conversation, if you have any questions for her, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily and what's up lines with 5505858832. If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus two three three. Good morning, Nash. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, I'm happy to be here. You have a very nice set. Thank you. It's and nice you look very to see colorful. outside. I know. <laughs> Tell us a bit about yourself. Before we get into what you're doing in STEM, media, movies, how did, where did you grow up? What was life like as a child? Ha, ah, okay. Tell me about yourself. That's like the hardest question ever. Myself. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> so my name is Nashoko, as you know. Um, I am the second of four girls. Wow. Hence my name Ashoko. So okay. when you hear K-O-R in a Ghana name, it's usually second girl. Ah, so okay. Ashoko. And I am from Teshin. Mm -hmm. I grew up there in Teshin with my family. So my okay. three sisters, my parents. Um, we're a very close-knit family. We... Um, I went to basic school in okay. Teshi, so I went to Daras Preparatory School, okay. and then I went on to Binkum Secondary School. Okay. That was the first time I left Teshi. Wow. What was that transition like <laughs> oh, for you? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I think I experienced some kind of a cultural shock. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. I mean, um, I, I spent all of my life in Teshi prior wow. to secondary school. Okay. And in fact, even when I went to secondary school, it was just when I was in school that I was out of Teshi. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw University of Ghana for the first time when I went to the University of Ghana in my third year in GIJ. So I literally you, you, just never Your went. life was just, oh, just around yeah. Teshi. <laughs> what what, what kind of troubles went. did you and your sisters get into as kids? Ah, the thing is, we never got into any trouble. Really? So my parents are really strict. You know, we never got out of the house. That's the other thing. Um, <laughs> The only time we went out of the house was to go to my grandparents' house where all the cousins would, you know, come, come together, watch TV, play, and stuff like that. So how did you make the home fun? <laughs> Four girls at home. <laughs> Four fun? Yeah, so, you know, girls growing up, a lot of bickering and... Uh, and who would be she the mediator said, in all said, of that? Which sister was you the mediator? I think I might, I might just be the trouble causer and the mediator. So I How do you the do trouble both? and I step aside and watch the fight unfold and then I try to fix it. Wow. Well, that's what my sisters think. I don't think so, but that's what they, they say. And the voice of the people is the voice of God. So I just let it go. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> in your childhood, in secondary school, what did you think you would become as an adult when people ask you, what do you want to do when you grow up? Ah, so in GSS... So I've had many faces in my life, or I had many faces in my life growing up. I remember when I was much younger, my, my big sister and I were in the same um, primary school. And my big sister, my older sister, Sharon, she's really bright. Okay. You know, she was a bright kid, and I was always lagging behind. So at that time in my life, I was always, I, was, I think I was rather timid. Okay. Um, I didn't talk much. Why? I don't know. I just, my sister, you know, she's a star. <laughs> she, she's very smart. She mm -hmm. always had, you know, so when the results come, they would always say, have you seen your sister's results? So How that did was, that make the, you feel? I don't know, I was young, you know. So okay, you, okay. I, I didn't pass. Okay, that's all right. But as I grew older, I think by the time I got to JHS, SH, uh, JHS, I began to be a little more open and um, I associated a lot more with girls than okay. boys because I had no brothers and I didn't know what, what boys were, were about. So, so I, 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 I had friends now, you know, I was cool. When I got to SHS, that was when I think I began to discover who Yourself. I was or, or something like that. What was like that, that process like, being an introvert to actually stepping out of your shell to ah. meet other people and have fun with them too? I think I'm some kind of an introverted extrovert. It's a closeted introvert in a way. Yeah, because I... I enjoy my own company and I like to be by myself. Mm -hmm. And usually I wouldn't speak unless I'm spoken to. Ah. Usually. Okay. But people don't know that about me because I think I'm a bit of a chatterbox when mm -hmm. I start when talking. When you finally start talking, you can't stop. <laughs> yes. So when I, so I, again, I should say my JHS was very, so it wasn't Teshi, right? Mm -hmm. But it was like the, it was a preparatory school. It was rather 
should I say high end? Yeah. You know, so it's everybody that school. came there was, you know, they were speaking, you know, really good English and they were traveling a lot and they were riding bicycles to school and wearing wow. the latest sneakers. So very competitive, mm -hmm. sort of. It was a cool school to attend. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So when I left there and I went to SHS, I went to Benkum Secondary School in Latte, Ukiapim, mm -hmm. where people came from everywhere, all walks of life in Ghana. So they people ride came, bicycles to the so school. So everybody was different. Like okay. you met different, different kinds of people. That was when I began to realize or find myself. Okay. You know, that was when people would say to me, oh, you speak so well. And I'm like, What did really? you expect? <laughs> no, I, I actually would like, because from where I'm from, the kind of students that were yeah, in your class. I would, I would think about five times before I opened my mouth to say what I Why? wanted to say. Because it was very competitive and people were rattling up and down. And like, just my classmates were really cool people. Like, so now my GSS classmates are very... So what, so, let's say a teacher calls on you in class to participate. Oh, I'll, it would what take would me go a through your mind before I you speak? I will get up, I will fidget with my dress, I will hold my hair, I will put my hands at my back. And what would you be thinking? Oh boy. So, I don't know. And you know, I didn't even realize this until I got to SS. That was when I realized that in GSS, I think I was a bit timid. Wow. But in SS, you met every Everybody. You but met were the you cool intimidated kids. by met... the kids in GHS in a way? Um, I think I was intimidated, intimidated by my sister because ah. my sister was always the yardstick hmm. and she was really bright or she is really bright. Mm -hmm. So she, up to now, she's one of the best writers I know. Wow. You know, when she writes, you'll be mesmerized by her writing. Wow. So, it, yeah, so my sister sort of made me see that, okay, there's something to aspire to. And mm -hmm. so I was on my way. Mm -hmm. But in secondary school, I met everybody from everywhere. You know, the cool kids were there, the not so cool kids were there, the sharks were there, the others were there, we were all there, it was a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. So it was there that people be began to say things to me that made me realize who I could be, who I was. I remember in my final year in secondary school, a girl, Linda Fia Metro, mm -hmm. walked up to me and said, I think you should represent our school for Mr. and Miss SS. Now, at the secondary school level, Mr. and Miss SS is like a really a cool big thing. Deal. Where the coolest person in the school goes. I was like, me? me? She said, yeah, you. I said, why? She said, oh, you speak so well and you're very confident. I said, me? <laughs> really? You know, so I began to find myself. I joined the SRC. I was the SRC secretary of vice, so I was the vice president for my school and the secretary for the region or something. Why, why did it mean so much to you to get out of your shell at that moment? I think in secondary school, it was just a, 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 a time to find myself or mm -hmm. it was a time when I realized all that I could be. And I realized I had not given myself a lot of credit yeah. as a younger person. Because you're fixating on the acad academia alone. Exactly. It was there that I realized, oh, I think I can do this. Oh, yeah. I think I can do that. And my mother has always said, never let go of an opportunity to do something. Once you have the opportunity, just do it. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't go well, you know you tried. Yeah. So with that at the back of my mind in secondary school, that was so loud in my head that when I got the opportunity to represent my school for debating competitions, I jumped for it. And we won most of the time in the Eastern region. Wow. And it was, it was new for me. Because, How did you prepare for the debate competitions? Oh, the debates were always so fun. So we would prepare for and against. Mm -hmm. We would write our scripts mm -hmm. and we'll memorize both sides. Wow. So when we go for the debate, we will toss. So the, the other school will pick um, for or against. So mm -hmm. you can pick either side. You don't know which you'll pick. And then, yeah. And then, it, you know, secondary school debates are usually memorized. Mm -hmm. And they don't ask you questions that you have so to, you stick to rack it. your brains. <laughs> so you just stick to the script. And it was there that I learned to memorize. Ah. So I could memorize three papers of um, debate script overnight. Because we never really, you know, a secondary school, one week, they tell you one week, and then you now have to write, and your teachers will have to approve. And then so overnight, we You're will done. memorize the scripts. I had a, 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 a partner, her name was Faustina and Cancer. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would memorize, memorize, memorize. So she said, okay, so if we pick for you, do it. When we pick against, you do it. You do it. And somehow, we we're always against. Wow. And How so did I was you feel always doing it. After oh. you've memorized and you have to deliver. The feeling is out of this world. You know, at that level, mm -hmm. standing in front of all these people, you know how secondary school kids can make you feel really good or really bad? Yeah. So when you're speaking and it's going well, then the fans are endless. <laughs> and your head is about to explode. And if you make one little mistake, they will bury you. <laughs> 
that's the that's 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 how it was. So wow. it was it was really good. It was good. Yeah. How did you end up at GIJ? GIJ. So uh, when I finished secondary school, I wanted to go to the University of Ghana and study law. Mm -hmm. But then why law? You know. It's just one of those childhood, I want to be a lawyer dreams. Okay. It wasn't anything in I particular. I grew up with. Okay. So I just grew up with it. But I also knew that when I watched Give to Auntie on TV, I was inspired. Okay. And I thought, this is a cool thing to do. Not that I want to do it, but it's a cool thing to do. I never thought I was cool enough to be on TV. Wow. So I would watch um, the breakfast show mm -hmm. on GBC every morning. And I would say, ah, this is a cool thing to do. They wear pretty clothes and everybody's and watching them. You know, this is a and nice thing good. to do. <laughs> you know, they sound great. You know, and that was it. That, that was the furthest I thought. Never thought I would actually be there because I didn't yeah. think I was, I was that person. You know. So law was it for you? So, yeah, at the back of my mind, I'll go and represent people who are trying to get their money corner. from the people who are cheating them and then come home to my little family and Comedy. we'll have dinner. That was it. <laughs> so... Yeah, so um, I found then that it was a post-grad course. You had to do something else. Mm -hmm. You had to have a first degree or Before something. Before you go to the... I think that was, that's yeah. what it was. So um, my mom spoke to my aunt, who was a journalist, okay. who said, I think your girl should go to GIJ. Hmm. And I said, okay. Were you excited about it or you're like, fine? I said, I'll okay. Well, I have to have something before I go to law school, so let's do it. And then when I got to GIJ, I found that it was not just journalism. It was a full communication institution. Mm -hmm. And communication is like one major thing you need to be an awesome lawyer. Yeah. And it was around the time that we had started watching Suits and Boston Legal. Like, Low and order so I was like, and ah, okay, cool. All right, let's do this. And then they were teaching us, you know, uh, proper uh, sentence construction, how to speak, how to interrogate, well, for journalism, not interrogate, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. you know, interview and get your story right. And somehow it all seemed like things I needed for law school. Yeah. So I began to enjoy it and I fully immersed myself into it. And that's, that's how it, it started for me. And at what point did you now move away from the law to say, ah, oh. Maybe well, I'll I didn't try really journalism. move away because when I finished GIJ, I did go to law school. Okay. So I went to the University of Ghana Faculty of Law in, I don't remember the year. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So I went to the Faculty of Law. I studied, um, so I have an LLB. Okay. But um, you're not practicing it? No. Why? Because Makola. <laughs> Back to TV Africa. Yeah. <laughs> How did you end up on TV Africa? <laughs> so, so Makola. And as you get older, you're just like, listen, it's all right. I learned the things I need to apply to know, my career. We are still but we'll going. talk about you the Makola you, you never know what God has, you know, planned. I believe in God's perfect plan for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I was given this advice when I was going to law school by my then boss. Yola Ayoade, he mm -hmm. said, nah, you have your plans, but God also has plans for you. Mm -hmm. And he's put you here and you are thriving. Yeah. Why don't you focus on this and grow in the industry and become, you know, become all that you can be yeah. here. And I said, okay, but I want to go to law school. And How was that law school so experience I, So I did you? go. Ah, an eye opener. Law school was really good. You know, it's, everyone should study law. You think Whether so? you want to be what a lawyer or not. Everything. So... From constitutional law to criminal law to tort to jurisprudence to immovable property to dead body as property to yeah. <laughs> I know That's and a the bit law morbid. of secession. I'm okay. sorry, I should have said the law of secession. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that helps. No, but I wouldn't have known what it meant. So I would have pretended I knew what it meant. So dead bodies. Yeah, that, that, that yeah. Makes sense. So everything, intellectual property, all of it. Okay. So it's good for everybody to study law. It gives you, it opens your mind to how things should be, how things are, and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So when you go to law school and you come out. You just see what's wrong all over the place. And um, I think it makes you a better citizen. Okay. It should probably be something that should be incorporated into the JHS, SHS curriculum. curriculum. It'll okay. be good. So I'll ask you about your Makola experience because people, mm -hmm. a lot of people have issues with what's I, going I on the there. <laughs> but if you have I, any questions for that, let strength. us know. Hashtag <laughs> Breakfast Daily, what's up, guys? 0550 <laughs> If you're outside Ghana, the country code is plus 233. So now, <laughs> Makola. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> See, what is I, that journey like? I don't have like? the emotional capacity. Walk us through it. Uh, what time is it? 
<laughs> to talk about we'll eat bakola. after that. We'll grab some ice cream after Can we talk about TV Africa? Then oh, we come no. to Bakola. Bakola first. <laughs> oh, no. Since you've come to it. <laughs> anyway, so you know Bakola, I mean, we all know the struggles that law students have to encounter mm -hmm. in order to enter Makola and to finish Makola. So, so, I mean, the Ghana School of Law. And because I, I still have plans of attending and finishing Makola, I have to tread cautiously in every, with ah, everything that I you say. You have to be very diplomatic. I have to be very careful. Because you might go back. Because I don't be want like to, this girl. I actually never entered. That's the thing. <laughs> I never entered. Why? So I still want to enter. So, so shout outs to all. I mean, <laughs> shout outs to the um, independent examiners. Shout outs to Makola. It's the best. Makola is the best. Like, there is no place like the Ghana School of Law, which I'll be entering soon. So just mega shout outs. But I have written the entrance exam. Um, what is that experience uh, like? That entrance exam? <sighs> so, studying for the Makola entrance exam is like studying seven different areas of study. So like wow. medicine, um, engineering, um, Maths. mathematics, art. technology, art, to write a paper that has 30 questions. How do you know what's going to show up? Yeah. It's the hardest thing. So how do you even plan your studies? It's the hardest thing. You just have to study everything. And if you're lucky, what you know would... would pop up. And the thing about law school is that there's no conjecture. Mm -hmm. The law is the law. It is what it is. Yeah. So you have to get it right. Wow. The Constitution says what it says. Mm -hmm. You cannot say anything else. Yeah. You know, and you don't just say the Constitution says. You have to be able to cite the articles. You have to be able to cite subsections. And you have to be able it. to quote judges. You have to be able to cite case law. You have to be able to cite Pretty much everything. So it's great when you are studying like your LLB level and you're writing constitutional law, you can be able to study what all the justices have said, you'll be able to study the constitution and all of that because you know you're writing constitutional law. Mm -hmm. Even that alone is like a whole thing. Yeah. But then that's what you're studying for. But when you have to study for a paper that encompasses all of these things mm -hmm. and it's not an open book exam, you have to Memorize, I think. How did you psych yourself up to, oh, to so study? So you just study. You know, you just study. You, you can't study for less than a year wow. for that exam. And it's not studies that you study today and tomorrow. You don't study your one week. No. You have to constantly study. And you have to be able to memorize. Where did you, you get the discipline memorize. from? So <clears throat> we're going to backtrack for a moment. But I did, or oh, I do some work in theater. Mm -hmm. And so on stage, I act on stage. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite kind of acting okay. because it requires you to memorize long scripts. My first stage play was a monologue. I don't know if you've ever seen the vagina monologues. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Okay, so what the vagina monologues like? is one of the longest monologues ever. Why is it called the vagina monologue? Okay, so it's the monologues about the vagina. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why is it so long? So I mean, it's not so, that complex, so is it? Just, um, so it just demystifies. Oh, we don't like to say vagina. Like you can't say it, right? Okay, I can say it, vagina. Awesome. I don't know. But I, you I think like, so. <laughs> no, but I'm a lot trying of people to are like that. It's like, not that I'm long. I'm looking at your camera man, and they're looking at me like, "What's this Isn't it girl too going early on about? <laughs> Isn't it too early?" But so, so that's what it is. Okay. So it sort of demystifies. It talks about childbirth. It talks mm -hmm. about hygiene. Ah. It talks about pubic hair. Okay. It talks about everything okay. that we like to close the door to say. Yeah. And so because of that, people do bad things. And people, so there's a lot of sexual violence against women and wow. they can't talk about it because you can't even begin to describe what you're what is, what's happened because yeah. then you have to hide and say it and stuff like that. Wow. So that's what the play was about. It's a very emotional play. Wow. You should see it. So the first, so the monologues are about, um, it's more than 50 pages. Huh. And it's monologue, so it's not dialogue. So it's not, I say a line, you say a line, and then we, we banter. No. Only you. Wow. You stand on stage, and you have a spotlight. And you say it so that people are not bored. Yeah. And it's theatrical. So you have to have all your expressions and choreography and everything right. So that was my first time on stage. And I had that big thing to do. 
And like, like a lot of people, I was also very somewhere like, this is vagina. What is this? <laughs> of all like, what things. Is this? What is this? And it, the lines are so real. Like, they ask the, like, the lines are so real. Like, some people have never seen their vagina before. Yeah. Let's say about JJ, just in case. We'll, we'll from okay, for the Oprah. sake of early Vajay morning uh, TV. <laughs> some people have never seen the thing. The JJ. Because you're not even interested. Because you can't even find it. Like, yeah. you, ha you have to have a good mirror, good lighting, good angle to yeah, see Yeah, you can't just, like... You can't see it. Bend them so it's a whole it. thing. So I was really struggling with these lines because did I it could, help you discover your own I wasn't comfortable with it at all, Why? honey. Because I'm, I was like many people, like, what's all this? Like, do I really have? Can we use another word? What is this? It was such a struggle. But so how then, did you psych yourself up? For when it? you get on stage, it's like when you get on TV. Mm -hmm. No matter the kind of day you're having, mm -hmm. no matter who's annoyed you, no matter how hungry you are, no matter who died this morning. You have to be able to put on a good show. Yeah. And that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. So for most people in the arts, we are able to switch out of who we are for a and moment and enter this other person and deliver so well that we're remembered for our performance and nothing else. Wow. So that's what it is. That was that's what it was for me. Mm -hmm. Even even you can ask Lydia Forsen if you ever interview her. Mm -hmm. It was a struggle for me at rehearsal. I couldn't rehearsal, everybody thought this girl is going to flop our play. Because we have, but the moment you get on stage and the lights come on and you can hear yourself in the microphone, mm -hmm. as an artist, everything just changes wow. in a split second, and then boom, you're okay. somebody else, wow. and you deliver. Wow. So, from theater, I learned how to memorize. Mm -hmm. So when I came to law school, memorizing for me wasn't so difficult. And for someone who in GHS and SHS couldn't pass my exams, this was big for me. You know, it was big for me. Yeah. So I thought, wow. In fact, sometimes my director at GHR would say, I think you have some kind of a photographic memory. Yeah. I don't. I just train my brain to be able to remember what I read. So mm -hmm. I use all sorts of things, you know, from mnemonics to music. And you just, remember it. Just all sorts of uh, ways and means, ways and means, you know, <laughs> to remember. So that's how I got through law school. And sometimes when I see something, I just remember you know, stuff that I studied in law school. And it's been a while since I finished. Yeah. So sometimes I just go back to read my notes so I don't forget at all. And it helps. Wow. Yeah, it does. It does help. Let's talk about your, your, your work in media, TV Africa, EIB, now multimedia. How has the journey mm. been for you? And what's next? Oh, what's next? I like that question. <laughs> okay. So I started off in G, uh, TV, TV Africa. Africa while I was still a student mm -hmm. at GIJ. Um, all the time, TV Africa crew will come to our campus and look for people to do vox pops on various youth-related topics. And I always say, me, 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 can I do, can I do, can I do? <laughs> and then over time, they just, I, they, they became fell in love my with you. friends. You know, the crew became my friends. They all became my friends. And when they come, they'll look for me so I can get them people. And then over time, they started inviting me to the studio to participate in the in-studio discussions. And then I got my own show. Then I got two shows. Then I got three shows. Wow. And then... I got a job offer from Chatterhouse to host Miss Malaika. Mm -hmm. And then guess who's coming for dinner? And then Chatterhouse um, became GH1 TV. And then EIB purchased GH1 TV. So I went with them. And then radio started for me at Star FM. It was my first radio experience. It was, it was a huge challenge, but... It's it now work. become one of my favorite things to do radio. Wow. And then uh, from EIB, I went to multimedia. Mm -hmm. I'm still at multimedia and thriving. And what's next for you? What's next for me? I think what I really like to do in media is to use the platform I have and the voice that mm -hmm. I have to make a difference for women and children. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm working on a campaign called GH for STEM, mm -hmm. which is geared towards promoting practical STEM education in GHS and SHS. Mm -hmm. um, it's an initiative of We Go Innovate. Okay. Um, we Go Innovate is an edutech platform. Mm -hmm. And they're working with GAST, with GES, the Ghana STEM Network, and Exploratory. Mm -hmm. And basically everyone in the STEM space to demystify how hard science and math technology engineering is for children in GHS and SHS. I don't think you went to GHS in Ghana, did you? You did no, not? No, I did Yes. But continue. For those of us who went to GHS in Ghana, <laughs> we had to imagine what diffusion is <laughs> and imagine what osmosis is. And they tell you, diffusion is the movement of 
fluid from a level of higher concentration to a to level of lower concentration. concentration. And my favorite part, do a semi-permeable membrane. What, and you didn't have anything in lab that? class to no, play around only with. No, for me to find out a month ago that if the lecturer just used a bottle of perfume and sprayed it, that's the level of higher concentration, and it diffuses to the other place, and yeah. it goes far. So if I spray in this corner, you can smell it over there, yeah, because it's moved to a level of lower concentration, mm -hmm. and the semi-permeable membrane, of course, is the whatever, mm -hmm. you know. That's, That's all they, could, they just could have shown us that. And, and maybe he would have understood. Yeah. Okay, so higher concentration from the bottle, lower concentration on the other side of the room. Ah, that's how it moves. So this is the process of, is it diffusion or, or osmosis? No, it is diffusion. It's diffusion. One of them. One of them. Yeah, it's fine. So, it's a test for you guys. You know, Go home and Google it and figure out which of so the two I'm it is. Like, dude, they could have just told us yeah. this. But no, we had to imagine it. That's how we study science. Oh, wow. And children so then it makes in it China not fun. are doing, yeah. they, have, they, have, they are making mobile phones and they're making robots and stuff and they're kids. Mm -hmm. But we, um, our, our definition of a good science student is the one that gets an A to chew and pour. Yeah. But that's not what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Science is supposed to be practical and hands-on. I mean, practical hands-on science or STEM education makes children think critically, they become yeah. innovative, they develop problem solving skills. We have so many problems in this town that science and technology can solve. Can solve. I saw a child make um, a light bulb with potatoes. Wow. And I'm like, oh my How did you God. do that? How did you do that? And she begins to explain the electrodes and then the, the whatever, the potato. And I'm like, huh? So is this in the curriculum? And they said, yes. I'm like, huh? So how come we didn't study this? Yes, we studied it, but we it only studied the theory. Yeah. They didn't teach us how to do it. So yeah. what the GH, GH4 STEM campaign is doing now is we currently have 100 experiments done by 100 GSS students nice. from across the country. So every, every corner of the country. When it was 10 regions, is when we filmed. Okay. So we went to the 10 regions, 10 schools. 65% of them are girls, by the way. Cool. And, <laughs> and with the help of their teachers, they make amazing experiments to define simple things in the environment. So there was an experiment, a balloon boat experiment, one of my favorites, which explains the effect of force on an object. Huh. So it explains how a, a ship is able to float on the ocean without drowning. Like, have you ever thought about why such a large ship isn't drowning like hmm. it's so large and heavy suppose i mean if you put something heavy in water it's supposed it to go down it sinks down well this girl makes this experiment and explains yet she just used a balloon and that's a good part about thing about gh for stem we appreciate that science labs are expensive mm -hmm. not all schools can have one yeah. in fact many schools cannot afford the labs five beakers for a science lab. Mm -hmm. So what the children do with a GH for STEM campaign is they use ordinary things in the environment. So for ah. example, they will use um, half a of bottle. water bottle as a beaker. They'll use okay. a pen case as a pipette. So they don't, you don't need all of those fancy things. And it's also teaching them to think critically as exactly. well. Exactly. Problem solving skills with yeah. what you have. So if the lights go off in this girl's house now, you know what her family will use? Kerosene or something. No. Potatoes. Because, ah, yeah, the one that made the potatoes. Yeah, but because, before that, they'll be using kerosene. And the light bulb, it's not like sm dimly little. It's bright. Wow. So it, this place is that, that little bulb with the potatoes and some um, things she did. You can just light up this place. We have a video from you guys. I think we should take a look at it. Okay, and let's, continue. Look at it. let's take a look at the video for Ghana for STEM. I remember my science lessons back in JHS. Long, boring talk about signs that I couldn't even grasp. We had to rely on our imagination and pictures in black and white science books to understand signs. Now imagine, imagine we had real practical hands-on approach to studying science, where we could actually see the effect of force on an object or how to change magnetic energy into sound energy. Now that would have been super cool. Who knows? It would have increased our understanding for science and we might have developed a deeper love for the subject and perhaps chosen different career paths, right? Well, now that's possible with a GH for STEM Juniors and Seniors Challenge. This allows JHS learners to experience real science experiments using very simple things in the environment, like used water bottles as beakers or 
pen casing as pipettes with real life applications to understand the otherwise complicated science phenomena. This is the new age for practical science learning in Ghana. My name is Na Ashoko. I am an actress, a broadcaster, and an entrepreneur. And in 2020, I'm the voice of STEM. To find out more, go to www.wegoinnovate.org or follow us on social media at WeGoInnovate. So that's GH for STEM and We Go Innovate. Isn't it about time that we became creators and inventors of technology? Oh, honey, it is. I wish I could create something, but I can't create anything beyond a work of art because now, you know. But what I'm saying is, or what we mean to say is, not all of us can be scientists, yeah. okay? Not all of us have the interest, but science is really about everyday applications. And learning, Practical STEM, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics, doesn't mean that you're going to become a scientist in future, but it opens up your mind to how you can solve problems. Yeah. It opens up your mind to, it, it sort of gives you some critical thinking training because yeah. you think critically about, okay, how am I going to do this? How can I use this to do that? I have this situation. How can I solve it using what I have without relying on Something else Something out of else. my environment. And by the way, most of the schools are government schools, so they are not. Um, they don't have anything. All these fancy apparatus, mm -hmm. but they are able to develop and create really good science experiments. And it's fun. Tell you what. Even aside the science of it, the children are just really happy to do this because it's fun. It's not work. And there's a TV camera in the studio Aww. in the in the school, yeah. so everybody wants to develop a science experiment so, so they that can they show can it do it. And so just by being there, yeah. all the children are excited and they want to do something. So they are all writing experiments. They are trying their hands on this. So I think even beyond what we have done so far, mm -hmm. it's just whipped up the children's interest in science more than it was before. And don't, don't, don't um, get me wrong, GAST, um, uh, the Ghana STEM Network Exploratory, um, GA Scientific and so on, have been doing some work in introducing you know, practical STEM to mm -hmm. the um, these yeah. children mm -hmm. in GHS and SHS. So what GH for STEM is doing is basically accelerating their efforts. Yeah. And also all of these videos and audiovisual content that we have um, recorded is going to be worked onto a platform mm -hmm. where all GSS children can see and learn. Where's that platform? So we're, we're st it's still okay. in development. Okay. So you come back development and at stages. So, okay. so wherever you are, you know, if you see your classmates, like a co-GSS student doing this experiment, you want to try it at home also. Yeah. And it's sort of like a competition, mm -hmm. like the science and math competition, but mm -hmm. a practical version. Of it. So as we watch on TV, we'll be able to vote for our favorite experiments and then just cheer these children on. That is so cool. I'm glad you, you think so. I think so. I mean, awesome. especially since we're in an environment where we discriminate against students who are not doing well yes. in these subjects without understanding that. We are afraid of our science it's teachers. Not practical. When you right. see the science, when I saw my math teacher coming, I got Some diarrhea. of them are so boring. So maybe the teachers <laughs> can also learn exactly. from this and so, make it more practical. So the teachers are a key part of this. Okay. So it's the students and the teachers because, I mean, these teachers have, against all odds, been able to help these children make these practical experiments, and we feature all of them in the videos nice. as well. So, yeah, the teachers are a key component of the GH for STEM campaign. Thank you so much, Na Ashoko Ben Sanduku, for being with Thank us. Thank you. Oh, is it over? <laughs> it's over. Oh, but boy. we have some messages for you. So, <laughs> I can see that fast. inspired by your chat with Na Ashoko. She's part of the GH for STEM campaign. I'm really enjoying the show. Yeah. I love this woman. She has taught me more on women's issues and got me to understand women and appreciate them better god bless you for what you do i would love to meet her good morning jifa good show this morning trust me i appreciate nashoko for whom she is she's just herself as simple as that i love her nashoko you remember adam's apple great <laughs> efforts dear keep it up that's from david from spencer you have a lot more messages but we can't read them but i can't say this enough nashoko we are proud of you Thank just you. by you existing you're inspiring millions of girls across the country Thank so you. continue doing the good work that you do <laughs> <laughs> don't go anywhere we'll take a look at the conversation david had with our relationship experts on you know keeping your relationship together and being whole not going into your relationship lacking something and expecting your partner to fill that gap for you but entering into the relationship as a complete whole individual. We'll take a look at that conversation right after these messages.